hello, welcome to Premier Scene. I'm Claire Bueno as Dustin Hoffman delivers his directorial debut in Quartet. How yeah. are you this evening? I'm fine. It's <laughs> wonderful to see such a crowd of people here. It's, a, it's a, great, a great collection of people and a great collection of people will come and see you in the opera as well. Can you tell us more about the music and, and why that particular type of music is important to you and performing it? Well, classical music is, is such an enrichment for one's life and such a joy. I, I can't imagine life without music and without song and bringing joy to others through song and I'm sure that people will love this film because it's uh, you see elderly people who are all professional musicians singers actors and having a wonderful time and there's a lot of sadness a lot of joy uh, some very funny bits and um, Yes, I, I think that people will really love it. And, and for you, before, as an artist performing on camera, as opposed to performing on stage, what, what was that process like for you? How did it differ? It's quite different uh, because, of course, on stage, uh, you, if you're singing in a, a very big opera house like the Metropolitan New York or La Scala or Covent Garden, uh, then you stand on the stage and you have to project your voice and also when you, uh, when you speak text very often there is what they call dialogue where, where you have text to speak and you have to sort of throw your voice, speak in quite... Uh, uh, you learn how to do that and of course the first thing I had to do was to take my voice back because uh, otherwise it's not natural enough. You, in, in film you have to speak faster and not so loud and one of course as a singer you're used to projecting your voice and but it has to be much more like in everyday life when you speak in the film that's yeah. very very true less is more isn't it really um, le less is exactly. more on camera well yes. yes because also you see you have microphones everywhere above you so there's no need uh, if you're talking to somebody, for instance, in the breakfast room, if you're talking to other people on another table, I would normally, as an opera thing, think, oh, hello, or something, you know. But you just speak in a very quiet voice, and the microphone does the rest. It's all the hard work. Yes. Now, I believe you wrote the play in, in the beginning. So what was the, what was the inspiration behind that in the first place? It was a, a documentary about... Uh, old opera singers in a house that Verdi, Verdi left his house in Milan to old opera singers. And there was a documentary about it which was so moving and funny and wonderful and it, I saw it on the BBC and it haunted me for about 10 years and then I wrote a play called Quartet and it's been a very successful play all over the world and now Tom Courtney said to me we should make a movie of it and that's how that got started. Did you have any hesitation in adapting it to a screenplay? No. no, I knew once Tom said it, I knew we were on. I don't know, something funny, just the way he said it. And, and, to, and to me, there seems to be an important meaning about um, protecting our senior citizens. And, and, you know, they've still got so much to offer. Well, exactly, this is the heart of the play. That it's a triumph, it's a celebration of old age. I don't like the world old age, it's just a celebration of people who've had a lot of experience. We're all young at heart. Well, I don't even know that, but they've had a lot of experience. Hello, now, you're Claire. to be c congratulated because you're the man that's orchestrated this, haven't you, really? Yeah, well, the I, ball suge in I suggested to my friend Ronnie Howard, I asked him would he like to do a screenplay from his play, which I'd seen years ago and enjoyed very much and found very touching. And he was very excited, and he wrote a screenplay, and uh, here we are tonight. And, and working with Dustin Hoffman as, as a director. Terrific, because the thing didn't get moving till Dustin came on board. It's important to have a, a, a name, of, a yeah, Hollywood name. He's, you know, he's not acting in it, but he was acting all the time, showing us how to do it, and we loved it. We and loved an, it. an important message for you from the film? From the film? Oh, nice to have a nice part in a film, isn't it? My age. <laughs> what a great story to be a part of. Oh, brilliant, isn't it? What was it about the, the character that you connected with when you first read the script? He's so alive, you know. It, it, it's an old folks home and you imagine they're all dying and of course they're not. Not since Viagra. <laughs> <laughs> they're all getting on with it. 
and I'm a stroke victim in it, and 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 I'm I'm supposed to be a bit ill, but I I'm fighting it all the time, you know, and I love that. Is it just that, that is that that inner strength, isn't it, that just carries on? Yeah, yeah. Don't die until you're dead. Exactly. And working with Justin, what what did he bring as a director? Oh, a piece of cake. He's he's well, he's such a legend of an actor. So the loveliest thing is he could see the traps before they came. You know, in the script, he would say, oh, well, pull that out. So he didn't leave you dangling. Because sometimes you get these scenes where they're written for the person next to you and you're sort of hanging about. So, so he would get rid of that pretty nifty, make, give you a move that got you out of there. He understood all that kind of stuff. Or he would say, oh, you've said that already and throw the page away. Say something of your own. I was going to say, I believe that he um, encouraged improvisation. All the time. But they dropped some of my good ones. I'm pissed off. <laughs> to the cutting room floor. Yeah. DVD. There's a scene where Tom Courtney and I were looking at a deer in the woods. And he says, isn't it beautiful? And I said to, I said to him, I wonder if it knows it's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not in the movie. I loved the story the minute I read it and I couldn't believe it was coming my way, possibly. It was Maggie and Tom both suggested me for it, which was incredibly kind of them and I'm eternally grateful. Because Dustin kind of, I think he, went, he watched a film, a Woody Allen film I'd done, um, where I had a very small part, but he thought, oh yeah, maybe I can work with her. He never met me before he gave me the part. We had a two-hour telephone conversation, which was brilliant. and. Uh, and I said, I think you ought to ring somebody up who knows me, you know. He, he said, are you turning me down? I said, I said no, but don't be too precipitous, you know, because you don't know anything about me. But so you have got a wonderful reputation. Yeah, but, you know, a lot of it's here in England. Uh, a few things are known in the States and in other places in the world. And Dustin's no, um, obviously the director in, the, in this yes. film. He, I believe he encouraged ad-lib. So how yes. did I that... Like improvising. I really like doing that. And Woody Allen is the same. You know, I said, can I mess around with your lines, Woody? He said, say anything you want. Yes. And I like that. I think it's because sometimes uh, you, what is written is just not quite what you might be feeling with the progress of the... And what actually comes naturally. Yeah. You know, because it's all about truth. Is this an incident going on? <laughs> I, think, I think Mr Hoffman's just around the corner and uh, people are taking photographs. Oh, I see. OK, carry on, sorry. <laughs> um, and, and for you, uh, working with a, an actor who's... Uh, or a director, rather, that's an actor, how is that for you in the, in the process? Does that make your life easier? It does make it easy because he understands how we get there and, and what, what difficulties we might have and how he can help us. And he's incredibly helpful. Um, and also completely without hu hubris, without ego. He's... You know, if he's if he feels he's wrong, if you said, Dustin, this isn't working, he says, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You know, I think he's adorable. It's very, very generous. And I hope that I can work with him again one day. Where are you? Obviously, as an actor, you're used to working and connecting with actors. But how did you deal with the technical aspects of film filmmaking and working with your, say, your director of photography and your editors? The truth is, the easiest thing in the world is to be a film director if you have first-rate crew. If your cameraman, your, your, your cinematographer is first rate, if your you know, production designer is, if your art director is, your costume, your, your first AD, your script supervisor, your casting director, I was fortunate to get really first rate people. And, 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 and if you do, you, you, your, your 10 year old kid could direct. <laughs> do, you, do you have a different um, respect for a director? She's, I'm going to get home tonight, she's going to say, why don't you give yourself credit? <laughs> Do you have a difference in, um, in uh, respect for directors now, having been one yourself? Yes, I think what I didn't realize over the years is how much acting a director does when you come to work because they've had such bad news in, in the last 24 hours that you never hear about. They lose a location, an actor they wanted, they can't get the money that they thought they had to shoot a scene. It's constant every single day. And that was, uh, yes, I, I, I have, I have a, a great deal of respect for directors that I naive you know, naively stuff I didn't realise before. Well, that's it from premiere scene for tonight. I'm Claire Bueno. <laughs>